mean, there's lots of ways to game the ID system. Right? I mean, first of all, you can get a ticket and see if they'll issue you a boarding pass. Right? If they won't, you know you're on a list. You can apply for a clear card. And I think it's like 80 or or $100 as a service to let you know if you're on the no-fly list. You can fly without an ID. You walk up and claim you've lost an ID. And you get secondary screening, but that's it. You can fly on someone else's boarding pass. Lots of ways to print boarding passes in someone else's name. It's, they've been discussed endlessly. There are all sorts of ways to game the ID system. It doesn't actually work. All it does is annoy honest, innocent people. There's an interesting disconnect when you look at the way ID checks are done at airports. When you make your reservation, your, your identification information goes into the computer and it's checked against the TSA watch list, the no-fly list. Right? So there's a check of the airline database against the list of bad people. When you go through airport security, your physical ID, your driver's license, is checked against the boarding pass. Right? And there's a belief that your boarding pass matches what's in the database. But that's never checked. So it turns out you can print a boarding pass at home that matches the name on your driver's license. And once you're through airport security, you can now use a legitimate airline boarding pass in any name you want. So because there's no check between your driver's license and what's in the airline database, it's very easy to fool all the identification checks. Now, to be fair to the TSA, they're trying to fix that. They're talking about putting systems at the checkpoints that check the boarding pass you show the TSA agent against the airline computers. Once they do that, and this is years away, but at least they're thinking about it, they'll close that ID triangle and eliminate this attack.